Alright guys, it is a blustery fall day here in South Austin, Texas as the next flood barrels down on us and I need to start batting down the hatches here on Wednesday, October 30th, 2013 so I don't get washed down the creek again. Jesus, I've been through this movie before. So, but, but before I run back and start uh, battening down the trailer, I just wanted to bring you this I, I, I think it's somewhat humorous rant so I'm just gonna share it with you this is is going to be on Fukushima but I have to start out a little bit on chemtrails I have been uh, I did a couple of rants on chemtrails last week about how the US Army in the mainstream media is admitting that uh, to to chemtrails and I've been having this friendly debate with this chemtrail denying buddy of mine uh, I'll, I'll call I'll call him Chuck who completely denies chemtrails I, I loved it he completely has been denying he, he won't pay any attention to all the alternative media uh, that's been reporting for years about uh, chemtrails and so finally it comes out in the mainstream media so I shove said okay Chuck here is a mainstream media the US Army going on record in the mainstream media in Live Science magazine admitting that they have been taking canisters of aluminum up into the sky and spraying them out so his response to me is Hambone, does the are you using the mainstream media to uh, to validate the, this chemtrail horseshit that the uh, that the mainstream media spreads more horseshit than a John Deere tractor? So uh, anyway, we were having uh, and we are enjoying. We we're, we're we are very close friends, and he completely denies. Chemtrails, 9/11. He completely denies the JFK conspiracy theories. And so, anyway, in our discussion about chemtrails, Fukushima comes up. I, I I've done. I did a rant recently on Fukushima. I believe it was titled "Why This Eco Nazi Does Not Have His Panties in a Wide About Fukushima." And in that rant and others, uh, I stated, and, and I think, at least as of right now, I, I, am, I, I am sticking with this statement, although I'm starting to vacillate, that I basically lump Fukushima, the, the threat to this planet being posed by the disaster going on there at Fukushima, I put it about the same level of threat as chemtrails and GMO foods that it is it, it, it is a threat but it is but it's not it, it, it Fukushima GMO foods and chemtrails while they're all threats to this planet what they are in, in my opinion uh, is it, it, they're just more ingredients in this toxic soup of uh, the toxic soup of global industrial civilization uh, as we figure out more and more ways to deny to deny the single biggest threat to this planet which is overpopulation the only reason we're even having that we have GMO foods or nuclear power or, uh, or chemtrails on this planet are directly uh, due to these to the number one problem facing this planet which is overpopulation so this is where I am on this that they're they're about equal uh, just all of this shit you can't you can't extract this shit out it, 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 it is a soup it is a stew that 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 is gonna kill us all uh, but anyway, so so Chuck's ears perk up, and, and like when 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 he when he hears me say this, so he completely denies that chemtrails uh, even exist. So they're no threat to this planet, 
he 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 believes on GMO foods that the good parts of them cancel out the risks. So that's an even one. Uh, but he believes th th this is my chemtrail denying buddy. He believes that Fukushima is quite possibly the single biggest immediate threat. Now Chuck and I, I, I think he and I are roughly in line on climate change, uh, you know, 30 to 50 years being the biggest threat. But, but right now, I'm talking today, guys. I'm talking while I'm sitting in this chair uh, coming at you with this rant, Chuck is one of these guys uh, who believes that Fukushima is today probably the single biggest threat facing this planet. He thinks I am being completely blase about it, especially if, if, if I lump uh, Fukushima chemtrails and GMO foods in the same thing and into the same sentence. Uh, so maybe I am, and so uh, I, I guess you realize, and, and why, and one reason that Chuck is especially believing this today, as I just yesterday, it was officially announced that TEPCO, TEPCO, uh, the, the the nuclear agency in charge of fixing the disaster over there in, uh, in, in Fukushima has officially been given the green light by the Japanese government to start moving those fuel rides. And so when you get on, uh, certainly on the alternative media, there are all of these fear mongers that I have heard that, well, what are there like, is it 1,200 or 1,500 of these fuel rides? that if anywhere in this operation that TEPCO, who could not be trusted to tie its own shoes w without falling on its face, uh, th that these bumbling Keystone Cop idiots, uh, if, if anywhere in this operation, I've heard this operation can take anywhere from one year to 10 years and will begin as early as next month that uh, that of anywhere along the line that these that these things get exposed to air that if they drop one of these suckers or even if two of these fuel rides just bang into each other i uh, uh, the last thing that this dumb hippie in a chair is a nuclear physicist but people who know a hell of a lot uh, more about it than I do, probably including my buddy Chuck, that if, the, that if anything goes wrong in here, that the chain reaction that could be set off by, by a small misstep, that the giant chain reaction that could be set off by this little misstep uh, could very well. I've heard, uh, I guess the most fear-mongering of all is that 2.9 billion people will die. And uh, one, one of the fear-mongers out there is this woman who I have a lot of respect for, named Dr. Hel Helen Caldicott, I believe. But the where I go to for my Fukushima information, is a fellow named a nuclear physicist named Arnie Gunderson. Uh, Arnie Gunderson, if you have not heard of this guy, uh, he is my go-to person uh, with Fukushima. So I stumbled on this hour-long, well, it was a 54-minute video last night. It was actually Helen Caldicott interviewing Arnie Gunderson uh, for almost one hour. This interview took place on August 5th when I was uh, when, when I was b blacking out uh, my own news back in August of this year and uh, I guess I will put the link on to it but it was a little disappointing to me because Arnie is one of these guys 
I can't tell how much of a fear monger he is. He does, uh, I, to, to make it clear, Arnie Gunderson has zero faith in TEPCO being able to carry this out without screwing it up. He has no faith in, uh, in TEPCO pulling this off. And uh, so assuming he is correct, and, uh, and that TEPCO, as anyone with a brain can predict, you don't need to be a doomsday prophet to predict that TEPCO is going to screw this up. Uh, somewhere, whether it's next month, five years from now, or ten years, they are going to screw this up. And what he keeps saying, is that so he says that when they do, not if they do, when they do screw this up, it will set off a nuclear chain reaction. But he doesn't say what that means. And, and, and Helen never asked him, Arnie, what does that mean? What does it mean? What does it mean for uh, the people in, uh, in Tokyo, Japan? What does it mean for the people in San Francisco, California? What does it mean for a dumb hippie sitting in a chair uh, ignoring the threat to this planet uh, in Austin, Texas? You know, these fear mongers, uh, I don't even know who it was, which one, is saying that 2.9 billion people are going to die. Uh, does, does it, uh, are, are, does, does Tokyo once once TEPCO does whatever it does uh, to set off this chain reaction which Arnie is predicting will happen is Tokyo gonna be dead in 15 minutes or is Tokyo gonna be dead in an hour how about San Francisco and let's be honest how about Austin Texas do do I have 15 minutes to uh, get down on my knees and get right with God? Do I have an hour or do I have a year to get my ass down to my property in Peru in the Southern Hemisphere where uh, Peru apparently is a good place uh, when the entire Northern Hem Hemisphere, how long do we have to, to migrate? to the southern hemisphere and this is the question but, Hel but Helen Caldecott and nowhere I, I I want Arnie Gunderson just in case you're listening to this rant would you answer this question from the time TEPCO does do whatever they are going to do to screw this up thereby setting off this chain reaction how long does Hambone Little Tail have to get his Fukushima denying ass to his property in Peru. Would you please answer that? I'm asking you that question. I'm going to email uh, Arnie that question and see if uh, he'll answer it for me. Uh, now, the, the before I go, uh, one question that, that he did answer uh, was looking at cancer rates. And he and Hel Helen Caldecott were both agreeing, we all, now looking at Chernobyl, we all know, we all know that Chernobyl uh, caused one million cases of cancer. That the Chernobyl accident uh, killed one million people with cancer. I had never heard that in my entire life. I did not know that, but if Arnie says it's true and Helen says it's true, who am I to argue? And so if, if, uh, if Arnie believes, as he does, that Fukushima has already released three times the radiation as Chernobyl, uh, Helen is jumping to the conclusion that, uh, well, then uh, if Chernobyl killed one million, and Fukushima released three times as much radiation, she is now jumping to the conclusion that Fukushima will kill three million people with cancer. Arnie argues, according to Arnie, 
uh, he thinks that about one million cancer cases uh, sounds about right to him. But as he points out, there is absolutely no way to prove this. But then he does put it in perspective. So Japan has a population of about 120 million people. I think it's 126 million. And he was claiming, he was quick to point out in this interview that, and, and this goes into my point about this toxic soup. He, he said, just keep in mind, Helen, that what I'm talking about here, that, that if the Fukushima disaster had never happened, that he, would, that he believes that 40 million, that one third of people in Japan today, one third of the 120 million people in Japan, 40 million people would have died of cancer anyway without Fukushima, that 40 million people, because of all of this other shit going on on this planet in Japan and everywhere else, that 40 million of them would have died of cancer without Fukushima. And so now uh, it, it, the fact that 41 million, uh, that what this means is a 2% rise in the cancer rate that Fukushima has produced uh, w without, I mean today, w without uh, TEPCO setting off uh, the, this absolute disaster, uh, which, as Chuck was saying, uh, will make uh, will make uh, Chernobyl look look like a firecracker in comparison. Uh, that Chuck is basically instead of uh, instead of putting instead of putting uh, Fukushima in line with, with, with chemtrails, he puts it in the same category as the Yellowstone super volcano. That that is the level. Uh, not if, but when TEPCO screws up that this planet uh, will be looking at the same level of threat as the uh, Yellowstone super volcano blowing and and, and uh, while all this was going on another one of my uh, conspiracy friends was sending in the latest article from her from this whack job named Mitch Batros who is claiming we are getting ever closer to the Yellowstone super volcano uh, it's coming a lot sooner than we believe, but that's a whole nother rant. So uh, I guess if if Fukushima don't get us, uh, the Yellowstone super volcano will. So I guess I will take my uh, three acres of land on the east slope of the Andes in Peru back off the market and hold on to that sucker. But anyway, it looks there, I feel the raindrops are starting to pelt. So let me save my computer, my camera, and my own ass and head back into my trailer and start battening down the hatches from uh, the flood that's going to wash me down the creek tonight, probably. And nice knowing you. Bye, guys.